So the sun has many different layers. So we're going to start at the inside and work our way out today. The innermost layer of the sun, we call that the core. At 15 million degrees, the core of the sun is by far the hottest internal layer of the sun. It's also the most dense, and that means that it has the most number of particles packed together of any internal layer. It's about 15 million degrees in there, and it's powered by what we call nuclear fusion. This is where the sun's energy originates from. Taking two hydrogen atoms and pushing them together to, be, to form helium, this process of nuclear fusion results in a huge amount of excess energy. The energy equivalent of about 10 billion megatons of TNT is produced in the core of the sun every second. So once the energy is produced in the core, it has to go somewhere. The core of the sun is about a quarter of the solar radius. And once, the, once you get to the edge of the core of the sun, the next layer out is called the radiative zone. The radiative zone is a fairly thick layer above the core but below the surface of the sun. Once energy and particles of light leave the core of the sun, they have to travel through the radiative zone to get towards the surface. What's interesting though is it takes almost 100,000 years for a particle of energy or light to travel from the core to the surface. And the reason for this is as it passes through the radiative zone, it can only go a very, very short distance before it, the energy gets absorbed by another atom and then gets re-emitted in a different direction. So instead of traveling in a straight line from the core to the surface, it ends up doing what we call a random walk. That means that the light that we see coming off the surface of the sun today was produced in the core of the sun up to 100,000 years ago. So we're looking back in time. 